Hi there, I'm Daryl Williams from Python Bytes. In the previous video, I showed how you can look at the telemetry pulses in Audacity. What I've done is a recording, single, that's a double, these are uh, packets, okay? A packet of 87 pulses, that's a single of 87 pulses. The second one is a double packet of 174 pulses and if you do your maths 174 divided by 2 is 87 so there are two sets of 87 pulses in that packet there's a single there's a double there's a single there's a double right so now I didn't know what the timing was in between these packets so what I want to do is, well, what I'm going to do is show you how I worked out how to determine the timing between these pulses. Now, the reason why I did several is because that's a single, that's a double, that's a single, that's a double. Okay, so I want to check between a single and a double, and then a double and a single and see if the timing is the same. Looking at the image here, the waveform in Audacity, it looks like they're exactly the same. Okay, so the way we do that is, I will left click and hold the button on the mouse down to there, and I can clean that this up after. Then I do Control C to copy, then I go up here, add new stereo track because that's in stereo. And then you notice I had a highlighted section that will put that in there and then I got to delete it. So no, I'll put the, that there on the end there and then I'll paste. There we go. Then I'll go up here get the magnifying glass so I can zoom in and out so I'll put it on the area I want to zoom left clicked once twice oh it looks like I've chopped it off okay check that that is a double so I'll get the selection tool move that to there ah there it is there so I get the magnifying glass Okay, so get the selection tool. No, magnify it more. Okay, now this is a packet, a single packet of 87 pulses. Now rather than go from here, I will go from here because what's happening is all of this here is background noise so now what I want to do is as I explained here okay all this here is background noise the weather station isn't transmitting then it starts to transmit and there is a distance from where it goes Doom. and then it has what's called a carrier. If you look on an oscilloscope looking at an RF signal, radio frequency signal, a carrier is the power, uh, it's, it's a signal that you send that has no information on it. Okay, it depends on the power that you're transmitting at, how wide the carrier will be. It's called a carrier because it carries your signal, whatever you're transmitting. Okay, so it has a carrier. And then when you start modulating that carrier, that is the signal that you're transmitting. So this line is the carrier. There is no signal on it, right? So once that carrier on Morse code, it just goes at one kilohertz. Go it gives a signal and the receiver goes oh oh there's a carrier okay get ready 
and then it has eight bits. Now I'm not sure if those short pulses are a one or a zero and then you get a wired pulse there which could be one or zero. It depends. RTL433 will help you work that out. But here, this is the carrier. This is when the weather station starts to transmit. So I will do the timing from this point here where there's no noise and there is a carrier. Okay, so I get the selection tool and I'll get just when the noise stops. Okay, back, I'm holding the left mouse button down. Okay, that's it there. And there we are. That's at the end. The end of the noise is start of the carrier. Now, it's a little bit sloppy, but you'll get a general idea what the distance is between this signal and that one there. And I'll zoom in here. Okay, now I'll just go back a bit. Now, this is the second packet. Now, in this packet, it has two sets of pulses. Each set is 87 pulses. And both pulses, you could say, each set of pulses are identical. They're exactly the same. The zeros and the ones are identical. So I'm assuming that that is a method of error checking to make sure that the packets that you receive are correct. Okay, so we measured the beginning from the beginning of the carrier. So the beginning of the carrier starts here. So we're not worried about what the, um, the pulses are that was in the previous video looking at the pulses. But now we want to know what the timing is. Okay, so I'll just zoom in. I'll get the selection tool and then when the pulse, the carrier, just that line there, that carrier, when the noise drops, okay, I'll go from there, delete, it's not moving, it's not moving forward, it'll move back but not forward. Okay, so I have to keep deleting. Ah, what am I doing? I don't have to do that. Okay, so if I put the cursor there, it's saying it's for roughly 48 seconds. Okay, I'll just, yeah, I'll just clean this up anyway, seeing I've got this far. Okay, it's taken a long time. Here we go, get the selecting tool, and I'll just go to that much there. Oh, what happened there? I don't want the top one. It'll delete it all. Yep, delete that. Right now, zoom in. Right, that's where I'm cutting to. There. Okay, and here we go. It's 48 seconds. Okay, so now I'll zoom out. I want to get the full screen. Where's that? Okay. Okay, so, so I go. There we go. This is the signal that we copy single to double. And now I want to do double to single. 
Okay, copy that. Then I go track. I want to create a new stereo track, so I click that there. And instead of allowing it to paste there, I'll go to the end and then paste it. And then go through the same process where I zoom at the start there. Okay, get the selection tool. There it is there. Zoom in there. And the same thing. I get the selection tool now. Just click there. And yeah, we go from here where the carrier starts. Okay, delete that. Yep. Okay, now I zoom out. Because I'm going from the double to the beginning of the single. Okay, so I'll click here, click there, zoom in. Okay, and get the selection tool. Very tedious. I'll oh, just go in the middle here because I don't need that. I'm not worried about the data. Okay, zoom in. Okay. And the selection tool again go from there where the noise ends delete that put the cursor roughly there there's 48 seconds okay go to the beginning yeah it's slightly off so it's not accurate but it's around about ah, ah it goes to the end right okay I'll do that next time I'll click that arrow there okay it's slightly off it's slightly off but it's around 48 seconds so that's it that is how to work out the timing of the pulses there we go that's the timing of the pulses and it's at 48 seconds down the bottom here 48 seconds so that's the timing of the pulses on this weather station that I'm using okay that's it I'm Daryl Williams from Python Bytes I hope you enjoyed this video so if you have any comments or questions in relation to this video please leave them below the video on YouTube and I'll get back to you as soon as possible in the meantime have a good day. Goodbye.